Surprise, I lied again. I was actually working on two episodes at the same time for the past two years. Originally, I had planned for the back burner to be the next episode on its own and start work on Huntsman for real after that, but I made the decision to move it up and make it a near simultaneous release because I knew some people would genuinely be bummed about the first bait and switch. In concept, the double feature is pretty cool. 2021 Ethan thought that this was a fantastic idea, and can I just say, that guy is a moron. Fuck you, man. <laughs> as fun as it was to shadow drop the Huntsman episode, this entire process was terrible for my mental and physical health, and it probably won't happen again. I pushed myself way too hard to get this done before the end of the year, and I ended up getting sick in mid-December because of it. I also got stuck with laryngitis, and it's a good thing my voice recovered as fast as it did, because I have contractual obligations. And on an extremely related note, thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. I've been using Opera GX ever since that first sponsorship a couple months back, and it's really, really nice. Thanks to GX Mods, your browser can look and sound like basically whatever you want it to. Whether that's pre-made themes like this TF2 one or a custom one you made yourself, anything is fair game. Actually, last time I worked with Opera GX, a lot of you asked for my mod that I showed off in the ad. Luckily, you can just upload mods that you create and share them with other people. So here's what I personally use. It's got keyboard sounds, sounds for opening and closing tabs, background music, some nice colors that are easy on the eyes when it's dark out, a custom wallpaper that Kat and I use for our Twitch channel, and also all of this is toggleable. Basically, it just looks and sounds nice, and it's what I prefer to browse the internet with. That's pretty much it. The only problem is that it has nothing to do with the branding of my channel, so I'm also very sorry to introduce the Soundsmith mod. And it's just the worst. Hey guys, welcome to my live commentary where I install the Soundsmith mod. Uh, there you go. Uh, as you can see, every sound is the stereotypes theme. Uh, you can change them all here if you want. We also have some uh, lovely background music here to work with. So we'll just uh, open a new tab. This is actual footage of me using the mod. The GX Corner is also a nice touch. It's got news about games coming out soon, stuff you can pick up for free, and even find stuff that's on sale for you. Oh, hey, Deep Rock's on sale. Cool, I love that game. Okay, listen, man, we can talk about it. I think my favorite part about Opera GX so far is how well it enables multitasking. It's got full integration with Twitch, Discord, TikTok, whatever social or messenger app you want. And okay, can I just say, they didn't even ask me to talk about this, but this thing, this semi-transparent video pop-out thing that you get when you go to another tab or an app is so nice. I never knew how much I wanted a feature like this until now. I'm actually watching a video in the background right now as I'm writing this script. I honestly can't go back to other browsers at this point. There's just not enough visual stimulation, you know? Look, seriously, Opera GX is pretty great. It's got solid performance performance, insane customizability, and it's also completely free. Use my link below to download Opera GX today, and I, I think my voice is dying as well, so, um... That one's going in man's guide. No, what <laughs> <a bit of laughs> just, Ethan just said the montage that's going in, in man's mind. guide. Ethan just... So going back to the main video, let's talk structure. Every man's guide so far has followed roughly the same formula. It starts as a tutorial, gets progressively dumber, and eventually it all goes to hell. And we cut to the studio, and then we do an ending stinger. Same thing every single time. This time we wanted to depart from the formula in a more interesting way than just lampshading it. So we ended up taking the entire structure that we've relied on so far and flipped it. It's just backwards. This time it starts completely off the rails in a surrealist bit where my soldier just loses his shit because of the huntsman's lack of stats. The studio scenes thus far have also dragged on for a little bit too long in my opinion, they typically serve as a way to transition into sponsors. So we also shook up the structure of that by integrating it into the off the rails part, just a bunch of fast cuts back and forth while still narrating and keeping the pacing up. I think it worked pretty well. As I'm reading this script, I am realizing that my voice is dying again. So over the course of the video, I might start to sound like the TikTok influencer trying to make a thirst trap. So just bear with me. I want to get the video out in early January. So. Oh god. <laughs> <clears throat> the reverse structure continues after that by dropping the arbitrary rating near the start of the video and then covering what the Huntsman is known for. The wacky weaponized jank that typically only shows up in the second half of a man's guide. Honestly, if there was ever a weapon to do a backwards episode on, it would be the Huntsman. Because like, on the surface, it incentivizes you to play Sniper backwards and just embrace the absurdity. Then as the episode goes on, instead of gradually getting sillier, it gets more serious as our characters discover that, wait, actually there might be something more to this weapon. And by the end, it's an actual tutorial on some of the more serious applications that the Huntsman has. And then we get into the whole social stigma and Luxman bit, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. I think the reverse structure worked well to give the episode a different feel than the rest of them. My main worry was that it would feel too much like the Beggar's Bazooka video, since they're both in that failing upwards with a side of actual cool tech category of weapon. But I'd like to think that I was able to avoid that, and it seems like it came across well, so that's a relief. Making it backwards also goes along with the overarching story with the Crystal Lee show. I know, like, okay, what the f*** is the deal with that, right? The idea is that so far, the two have been actual shows being produced in the same 
fictional universe. Man's Guide is procedural, but The Chris Daly Show isn't. The shows have both made passing references to each other before. What about that money we got from The Chris Daly sponsorship? They just got off a really tough shoot on Man's Guide. But for the first time, they're actively interfering with each other. Between the two Man's Guide episodes, Chris breaks into the studio and uses the procedural episode machine in an effort to reverse his show back to the start of season one. If you've seen The Chris Daly Show, you might remember that he was fired after that. Yeah, you're fired. Uh, don't come by the studio, or we'll call the f***ing cops. The Crystal Lee Show was my life, you understand me? But because he doesn't understand how the machine really works, he uses it incorrectly. So the next episode of Man's Guide is instantly generated with most of the same ingredients, but the structure being flipped. And things pretty quickly go off the rails starting right here. He's still around in the post credit scene, but what's happening here? Where is he? Did he succeed in resetting the Crystal Lee show? Are the two shows still even in the same universe? And for that matter, what's changed in Man's Guide now? Who's corporate, and why weren't they around in these episodes? How did KJ know the show was procedural if everything gets reset? Everything goes back to normal at the beginning of the next episode. I guess the big question surrounding all of this is... What the hell is going on? Who knows? The possibilities are literally endless. Man, if only Chris were paying attention to stuff in the background of the Backburner episode, he would have known not to f*** with it. There's actually a bunch of stuff hidden in the background of these that I really want to show off, but since some commenters have already found some of them, this leads me into a new segment that I want to do with every episode going forward, Easter eggs. If you manage to spot any of these references and background jokes in future episodes, leave a comment and let me know that you found it. I'll grab the first few people to spot them and highlight them in these behind the scenes videos. Starting off with an obvious one, this shot of my soldier getting flashbanged by fire particles is just a recreation creation of that one shot from Oppenheimer. There's also this funky little guy on the right monitor there, and that's something that Crunkadile sent me. I'll be talking more about that in the animation section. Next, we've got what I affectionately refer to as the biblically accurate chimp event. The subtitles here say, bro, please just stop shooting the pyro, which is kind of close, but the vocals are actually admittedly scuffed Google Translate Latin that more closely translates to, I beseech you, stop firing upon the arsonist. <laughs> I'm also a big fan of how the world's smartest soldier mains concept of this wise, unknowable, omniscient deity is a goddamn chimpanzee with a megaphone. It seems like the soldier really took a liking to the little guy too. Hey, look, there he is again. During the man's guide to the frying pan section, I wanted to emphasize the smite narration a little bit. My original plan was to use just like a standard vocal doubler plugin, but then uh -oh. I remembered there's already a fantastic sound effect out there that works perfectly. So I just layered my voiceover with Joe Cat's voice from a crap guide to Paladin. Smite! I've been a big fan of his stuff for a while now, so it felt appropriate to drop a little reference there. Okay, so the podcast bit just has a ton of random stuff in the background. I've already talked about some of it, like YTP sex are on the monitor, the cool and awesome badass logo that I spent a whole 10 minutes photoshopping. But there's also some smaller stuff like the shotgun mic peeking into the shot because they couldn't be bothered to double check the framing. And this monitor, which you can't really see since it was shrunk down so much, but it's actually Manosphere Soundsmith Googling how to get people to like me. It seemed appropriate for the character I was playing. And, and also there's... Uh, th this part. The surrealist studio bit at the beginning is also just full of random references and bits. Here's some of my favorites. The there's no stats exchange at the beginning follows basically the exact same cadence as that one scene from Code Mint. I can't find them. There's only soup. What do you mean there's only soup? It means there's only soup. Well then get out of this soup aisle. There aren't any stats. We mean there aren't any stats. I mean there aren't any stats. What, like none? Zero. Cool. These shots are just a recreation of that one Yakuza gif. Uh, uh, yeah, that one. This entire bit is a reference to Peanut Man's animation about, uh, the Fumo invasion? Look at, Look at this. this! There, there is, is no way! way. <laughs> This one was KJ's idea. I don't really understand what's going on here. And then, of course, there's the scene with Lazy Purple that is just that one SpongeBob scene. This bit was actually Lazy's idea. It was originally just gonna be like the camera reappearing in the wrong room and then Lazy's like, wait, what? But he was the one who thought to do the SpongeBob joke, which was way funnier than anything I had in mind. Moving on, Crunkadile was really trying to keep things stylish in the firing range scene where the rifle sniper hits some uh, familiar poses. Pro gaming nerd who animated a ton of shots for these videos sometimes hides stuff in the background like these guys. Look at them go, they're just having a great time. My soldier bursting through the fourth wall in this shot is a reference to one of my favorite H Bomber guy clips of all time. You know, the one where he's reacting to Ben sell their homes and move Shapiro. <laughs> Just one small problem. Just to really make that connection obvious, I also ended up using the same static clip that cuts to black too. Anyway, here's that source double spaced and properly cited in MLA format because being the second half of an H Bomber Guy video is my worst nightmare. Here's a small one that I don't actually think anyone noticed. In the post credit scene for the back burner video, Chris says this. Look, I can only lock pick into the studio recording booth so many times before they put some security cameras in this place. And hey, look, somebody's watching. 
weird. Nobody spotted the security camera, but people did mention cameras. Like there's this one comment that says, I like the part where you stared directly at the camera, repeatedly screaming, wake up. And my phone started to heat up and glow a blood red before it shut off and then started up normally. It was a really neat touch that really tied the video together. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. I can't find it anywhere in the video, but I guess you should probably wake up. No, seriously, wake up. It's been three years. Your mother and I miss you. Wake up. And finally, I got a lot of comments about something called reload sped. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean either. I got pretty close with this. You've got to be kidding me. All right, next let's go through the thumbnail stuff real quick. This thumbnail was also created by the combined efforts of Chris and Kat, and we based it on Diana the Huntress as the personification of the night, painted by Anton Raphael Mengs in the mid-1800s. That sentence took me like 10 days to get right, holy sh**. We actually tried something a bit different with the aspect ratio on this one, since the piece itself is nowhere close to the 16 by nine ratio that you need for YouTube thumbnails. Instead of just expanding the image and trying to make it work like we've done in the past, this time we tried to make it look like an actual painting on the wall in a museum somewhere, complete with a hand-drawn frame. This idea also led us stray a little bit closer to the YouTube meta of text and thumbnail by making the man's guide text look almost like it's on an information card next to the piece in a museum. I'm a big fan of this personally, but I also want to hear what y'all think. Insert call to action requesting viewers to comment below here. Wait. This thumbnail for this behind the scenes video is also based on a painting. This one is one by William Russell Flint in the late 19th century. It was actually a first draft that we scrapped because of the same aspect ratio issue, but this is still some great work by Chris, so I'm using it here instead. All right, next let's talk animation. First of all, I need to thank everyone who worked on these animations for keeping the massive secret about the double feature under wraps for as long as y'all did. I honestly can't believe it didn't leak before release, so yeah, thanks. Anyway, credits should be on screen now, but I do want to go in closer and highlight some of my favorite details in these scenes. Everyone here put in a ton of effort and I really don't want it to go unrecognized. Crunkadile animated this scene from the back burner video in Blender instead of SFM and used a really complicated process involving physics simulation to get this ragdoll to happen. I love how it just like folds in on itself, it's f***ing amazing. They actually uploaded a video on their channel that talks more about it, so that'll be in the description if you're interested. I started working with Pro Gaming Nerd pretty late into the production of these videos and holy hell, this guy is good. Personally, I'm a big fan of the smears that he uses to emphasize fast movement, they just, they look fantastic. My housemate Aaron did the assets for this 2D animated scene and actually provided all of the body parts as transparent PNGs, so I effectively had my own rig to work with and match all of the movements to my voiceover in Premiere. And finally, Stakey came in with some of the most expressive dialogue animation I have ever seen in SFM. There's so many little moments that I could go over through these scenes, but I'll just mention my favorite one, which is that when KJ mentions at the end of the Backburner video that we do this gag every single time, he looks directly at the camera when he says, then we cut to the studio. I don't know why that's so cool to me, but it's one of those things that most people would never notice, but it fits so perfectly that it just feels right. All right, moving on, before we get to the bonus clips, I do want to talk about topics that we didn't get around to discussing in the video proper or just didn't talk about for as long enough as I would have liked. I did kind of rapid fire off more interesting topics towards the end, so we might have been able to talk about them more had we not been building up the pacing of the video towards the big montage finale thing. First on my list is secondary synergy. It's pretty commonly known that the Huntsman does 120 damage on a fully charged body shot, which is just barely below max health for light classes. Screw you! I am gonna go watch that family guy! <laughs> This means that the SMG is absolutely phenomenal when paired with this thing. You really only ever need one or two shots to connect to finish someone off at any range. There's also the situation where you tap fire or partially charge a shot versus a demo, pyro, or soldier, and you don't quite hit that threshold to one-shot them. I often find myself hitting like 155 or 160 damage headshots versus those classes. I headshot them, no! And having the SMG in your back pocket can reliably secure those kills as well. On the other hand, KJ's secondary of choice is Jurati, and that's also just kind of really strong in general. With the Huntsman specifically, a fully charged mini crit body shot does 162 damage, which doesn't put it over too many damage thresholds, but it does let you one-shot light classes, gunslinger NGs, and notably medics. In terms of direct synergy with the Huntsman, I do think the SMG is a little stronger, but the mini crits you can give to your entire team do probably make this overall the better option. It's just that having a secondary that can deal direct damage feels better to me, you know? If only there were a secondary that could give you mini crits while also functioning as an SMG. Look, hear me out, okay? I know the cleaner's carbine is bad. I know no, I'd be better off using basically any other secondary, but like, come on, this thing is hilarious. It's basically just giving yourself half proficiency in both utility and damage, but I think that if there was any sniper primary that kind of synergizes with it, it would be the Huntsman. It's also just funny because it's bad, like, 
I don't know, cut me some slack, dude. Okay, last one, I promise. My secondary of choice for the Huntsman is actually the Cozy Camper. The main draw, obviously, is the health regen, which lets me be a lot more independent and aggressive, but also losing an active secondary really forced me to get good with the Huntsman. Because, like, my default muscle memory for the longest time was shoot the Huntsman, and before I even know if it hit or not, swap to the SMG. And yeah, that's probably for the best, because I was probably gonna miss, but with the Cozy Camper, you can't do that anymore. I mean, I guess you could swap to melee, but anyway. Using a passive secondary forced me to focus more of my attention on the Huntsman, and I think that was for the better. I never would have gotten clips like this one, because if I wasn't using the Cozy Camper here, I'd already be holding my secondary. Moving on from secondaries, what are some other things I didn't talk about? Right, fire arrows. So friendly pyros and also bison soldiers for some reason can light your arrows on fire, which makes them inflict afterburn. <laughs> It's a fun little gimmick that doesn't really seem like it would have much use until you remember those 120 damage body shots. Hitting a light class with a flaming arrow basically guarantees their death, plus you also sometimes get a cheeky kill on a medic or demo man. The full afterburn damage you can deal is 80, meaning technically you can kill a soldier with a fully charged body shot, but that assumes it deals full afterburn, which is pretty unlikely. Wait, what? <laughs> it doesn't do full afterburn. It does, uh, 60. Damn. All right, well, um, I, I guess ignore that part of the narration, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> That's not true. Don't listen to me. Still, flaming arrows do a surprisingly large amount of extra damage. So, Pyros, if you see a friendly Huntsman sniper, give him a light. It really does help a lot. Let me light up your arrow, friend. Need a light? <laughs> Let me light up your a, arrow, friend. Tag a homie who lights your arrows. Oh, wait, yo, I got a body shot and killed him because of the light. Thanks, bro. Also, one more weird fun fact. Going underwater doesn't extinguish your flaming arrow. I have no idea why, but apparently it's a thing. Right, keeping on with the whole pyro thing. Air blast. Right, so the Huntsman is a projectile weapon, which means pyros can, in fact, reflect your arrows. It can be really rough at longer ranges, but I actually don't think this matters that much. There used to be this thing where you couldn't shoot the Huntsman in midair. So if you got air blasted up and let go of Mouse 1, your character would fire the moment his feet touched the ground. This meant that pyros who knew their sh could very reliably air blast your arrows if they got in close. But as of the tough break update, you can fire in the air. So if an air blast happy pyro gets in close, they're almost certainly going to be operating off of prediction. And that means you can kind of just wait for them to air blast. And then the second time you run into them, you don't wait. It's pretty much the same thing as how you deal with them as soldier, except you have a lot more leniency since the timing for a huntsman reflect is a lot stricter. Like, don't get me wrong. It's definitely possible to get owned by a reflected arrow. But tough break has really introduced some more interesting counterplay into the equation. So it's not as bad as it could be. You can air blast. Okay. What happens if I just don't shoot? <laughs> Mind games? Okay, let's see. Oh, great, funny ragdoll. I kind of glossed over the topic since we were doing that build up to the tonal shift where I was like, oh yeah, nothing the Huntsman can do really matters and all that sh But the fact that the Huntsman is one of the few weapons in the game that can pin ragdolls to surfaces makes it a funny ragdoll machine. All right, you know what? Let's just do a supercut of all the ragdolls I got while recording. I may, I may, since you're, <laughs> people in my party are two snipers and a spy. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh. Damn. You seen this? Oh! I just keep funnies on my Twitter, that's about it. Let's see if I can catch him on the way out. <laughs> oh, another funny rag doll. Hey, it looks like he's standing up. Nice. Oh, yo, oh. funny rag doll. Check that oh. out. You see that? Okay. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> dude, you pinned him to the wall, hung it up like a fucking ah, decoration, dude. Oh, there's one. Oh, look, a funny, funny ragdoll. 
I am sorry. Oh, wow. He's still going. God damn. <laughs> Where did you go? Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ouchie mama. <laughs> I get fucked. Oh my god. Wait, that was so funny. <laughs> When the ragdoll is funny. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to talk about was the last real topic of the video, Luxman Rage. Here's the thing, people complaining about the Huntsman is actually a lot more rare than it used to be. These days, popular opinion has shifted more in favor of getting pissed at rifle snipers, and for good reason. People, on average, are just better at sniper than they used to be. Whether it's natural improvement over time or a more artificial increase, it's undeniable that snipers just hit their shots more these days. And when you're fighting a sniper, getting hit with a rifle usually feels a lot worse than getting hit with the Huntsman. This is mostly because with a rifle, there's just not as much feedback to go off of. With the Huntsman, you have the projectile trail, more detailed sound cues when you barely dodge a shot, and the lingering arrow model can even indicate which direction the sniper is shooting from. With rifles, other than the dot, which can easily be hidden, and the sound, which can easily blend into the chaos if you're using the right weapon, there's just kind of nothing until you die. Yeah, the Huntsman's spammy and has a janky hitbox, but in my opinion, it just feels better to fight against than the rifle. Anyway, we honestly thought that we might have to change the whole ending of the video, because people just really don't care as much about the Huntsman as they used to. Kind of just trying to piss people off. Oh. He was actually nice about it. <laughs> Alright. Plan failed successfully. I should pretend I'm part of Blue Team. See if they don't realize. Yeah, yeah, get him. Kill him, guys. Kill him. Yeah, kill them. Yes. <laughs> oh, wait. No, you're being nice about it. Fuck you. Be toxic. <laughs> This is the problem. Every time you do something funny with the Huntsman, everybody's just like, damn, okay. He complimented me. That's not supposed to happen. You're a spy. Damn it. Even the scout is complimenting me. What is going on? Stop. Stop being nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, he said nice and chat. Fuck off. Complain. I need you to complain. Come on, man. I need footage. I think that's a free to play, though, so he's not going to complain in chat. Oh, he said GG? Man, come on. Damn it. It is literally impossible to get people to complain about the Huntsman. God damn it. The pyre is nice. I hit a bullshit oh. shot and he just said nice shot. Come on, man. I need you to complain. Work with me here. You gotta be a dick, too. Yeah, you're maybe. You're saying nice shot and you're saying TY. Say, like, don't say TY. Say, like, scoff. Or <laughs> like, piss him off. You gotta Aww. want You gotta earn Yeah, him. okay. Maybe you're right. Let's we'll start being a dickhead to people in taunt after every kill. Maybe that'll work. Okay, maybe that'll do it. There's a scout behind us, by the way. Soldier behind you. I see him. Ah. Yeah, this is the guy I killed earlier. He's taunting me back. E. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that might do it. Please rage. I beg you. I mean, if he if he died while taunt, oh well, nah, he's gonna. He's, oh, he's, nah, he's like, Okay. Damn it! You're too nice. Fuck that you. guy was just very much just like, yeah, I deserve that. Yeah, no, nah, he just taunted me back. Like, <laughs> you're too nice. Stop it, please. I need clips of people raging. <laughs> <laughs> That could be it. It's always the second sniper. Oh. That's only that's not much of a rage though. That's but, uh, not rage. They're having fun with it. Stop having fun with it. Be mad. Fuck you. They just don't care. Like if we were using rifle, they'd be raging. Dude, I'm telling you. Like, 
we're gonna have to go the other way because I'm being honest. Uh, normal sniper is such an issue anymore that no one cares about Huntsman. But then we had an idea. A lot of people that used to complain about the Luxman were new players. More specifically, free to plays that just didn't have the experience fighting it yet. And now that free to plays can't use chat and casual anymore, of course you're gonna see less rage about the Huntsman. Obviously, the solution here was to play on community servers instead. And what better place to go to get somebody to complain about something than the forbidden land of. Okay, okay, it's not that bad, I'm mostly joking. Mostly. But it's honestly a really funny bit. How do we practically guarantee that somebody is going to complain about something we're doing? Uncle Topia. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't think that's Huntsman Rage, but this is literally the first game I've been in the server. And let's just say it, um, it worked pretty well. How is that a headshot? Oh, there we go. That could work. I bet I can do better though. Oh, I just hit a 360 headshot. That was sick. Oh, that's it. We're done. God bless Uncle Topia. <laughs> I should probably mention that I don't actually dislike Uncle Topia. The servers are good, and it provides what is essentially a necessary service, considering the state the casual is usually in. I'm just goofing on it because it's extremely funny to me that after struggling for months in casual to get clips of people complaining, I got all the clips I needed after, like, a couple games of Uncle Topia. I just... <laughs> They're good servers. Like, people complain a lot there, and it's really funny to me. All right, it's about that time again. Well, sort of. This is normally the point in the video where I would dump all of my extra footage to significantly extend the runtime of the video. But if you take a quick look at that runtime, uh, we are already over like 25 minutes on the behind the scenes stuff alone. And full disclosure, I have like a terabyte of extra Huntsman footage. And even when I rough cut it down to just the funnies, it's like an hour on its own. So because I want to get this video out in a reasonable amount of time, I'm just going to drop a few bonus clips from this video's production, you know, like Gmod and STV setup stuff. And then over the next couple of weeks, I'll work on editing down the rough cut of the extra footage and have that be its own video. Cool? Cool. Anyway, thank you all again for watching. Make sure to like and comment something so the algorithm thinks I still make good videos. Yeah. <coughs> okay, my voice is dying again, so... That's it. Bye. Okay, so just grab me and rotate me around slowly. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, um... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this looks stupid as f I'm gonna show this to you. Hang on. <laughs> that would suck if it did. I think you're a liar, Ethan. Wait, what? That used to be a thing! Oh, they must have bugged. Oh, they must have took it out when they fixed the bug with the bison and gave people multiple times. Maybe they they're did. The, Wait, when? Okay, right hang here. on. This I swear to God, this used to be a thing. Hang on. the The idea is they used to use fire particles, which meant they could light huntsman arrows on fire. But as of Meet Your Match in July 2016, they changed it to not use fire particles anymore, which means that it can't light arrows on fire anymore. And then during Jungle Inferno, they changed it back to its original design, but then also changed the fire particles. Which meant that, uh, A, the bison was even worse than it was in its original state, and B, it can't even light Huntsman Arrows on fire anymore. Jesus. Awful. It's, like, box for it is, like, super small. I want the f I have to, like, hit it when it goes past me. Ow. <laughs> anyway, there's yet another thing I got wrong. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> Thank you. Ready for the charge here, Doctor. Good. Here, Doctor. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> here, What's he looking at?